Hey guys, Justin here. Today's video is sponsored by me. If you're a fan of racing Arca and want to support this channel, I just launched a merch line. Click on the link in the description to go to my store and there will be shirts with a simpler farmer logo and also a retro style t-shirt, which I got custom designed and it's really cool. There's also stickers so that you can show the world how you got your eye rating. All right, let's get to the lap. Because you can use more brake. So you just drive it in deeper, use the brake towards the center of the corner and then drive off. You break the 16 second barrier? No, 16.006 right now. I'll beat that this time probably. Three, one, two. Yeah, it's nine, six, four. All right, let's take a look at that. So this is another interesting one. So notice here, I'm in third gear. We are not going to fourth gear here. You may feel a little bit more secure in fourth gear when you're racing, but trust me, it is slow. Your car will not want to turn off the corner. You're gonna roast the right front tire. You're gonna have to do third gear here if they keep this setup. I don't, I don't know what this setup is, but in third gear, it's, it's better. So I'll show you why and what we have to do. So doing our run up, we're just gonna do the same thing up by the wall and then try to make a straight of a line as possible coming out of the exit. So we turn off the wall abruptly, straight line. Turn off the wall abruptly, cut down to the bottom, open up the wheel early as we can and we get a little run up here. But the run up doesn't really matter, why not? Well, look at what throttle we're at. We are on our hot lap, on a flyer, carrying as much momentum as possible. I'm only at 60% throttle. And I get off the throttle just after the start finish line. So yes, we are not going 100% throttle anytime in this lap, anytime in this race, anytime. We are going 60% to 70% at most. And then our breaking point is just after the start finish line. I like to, my point is kind of when I can see the green cone. Like about right there. So I break, I aim at the curb, and I try to get my left sides on it. This isn't completely necessary. In fact, I took a lot. It was, I was kind of surprised it was that fast. Maybe that is a play, but it, the speed that you'll get because of how flat this track is, there, there's no real speed to carry. There's no momentum to carry throughout the corner. So we're just trying to get as low as possible and set up the angle for our exit. So I aim for the yellow and get my left on it. You see, I was dragging my brake. And again, 87% brake bias. You don't think this is going to work at first, but we're going so slow that it's fine and we don't want to spin out. So I actually get almost all the way on the apron and then I gas off of it. So I, I like to just get my left sides on it. I might've just about gotten my right sides on it too, but getting my left sides on the apron and then keeping my steering input, it's not gonna spin from here if I'm only holding 50%. So I keep the steering input and then once I can open up my throttle and it starts sliding off the apron, then I up it to that 70-ish mark. Oh, I, ooh, ooh, I was getting up there. I was really pushing it there. This is not something you really ever want to do besides maybe this exact hot lap. So almost 100, and then we angle it. So we see a tiny grip flick there, and we angle it again right at the curb. We're, we're trying to get our lefts on the curb. Brake, make sure we're not spinning out. Lefts clip the curb. We drive onto the curb a little bit because, okay, I'll tell you why. Our angle here, that doesn't, it's not gonna do me anything to avoid the curb and come around. That's gonna lose me time. So my best option is just to cut because I can keep most of my momentum and still have that angle one off coming off of, the, off of the apron. So I drive onto the apron a little bit. I kind of hook it around there and I come off about on pit road entry. So you see, I actually add, I actually start taking out steering while on the apron still because I can now slide up to the wall, again, trying to get as much throttle in as possible. And it kind of, 
It's a little loose there, but that's okay. But this is just hot lap that's very feasible to do back to back. We'll do this one more time. So brake, hold that brake until we get to the yellow. Once we get to the yellow, we gas up onto it. We hook that apron just a little bit and we let it slide up to the wall and then add as much throttle as you can without the wheel spinning. All right, so we just did a race here and I won my first top split race in a while. It was a hard fought battle. I was surviving the whole time, but this is my first short track win too in this split. Um, so off the start, I got a really good start because going side by side is really tough for these guys. Um, let me go there. So, when you're on the outside, you cannot do anything. Like, there, you just have no grip, and you're just at the mercy of the freight train. It's like, let's watch Larry here. He got stuck up here in second, and he's just gonna get, well, he, well, it looks like he got down, but look at the 17 car here. He just gets freight train to the back of, of this line, just for being on the outside, and he was lucky to get a hole there. Oh, and then, okay, looks like Larry got up on the top here too. Gavin passing Larry, let's go. But yeah, so Larry was in fourth gear this race and that allowed some people to get some runs under him, which is really bad because once you're up top, you get freight trained. So I really don't recommend fourth gear, even if in theory it's a little better, especially if you're in a pack because you really need to be defending that exit because you can get to take advantage once and then suddenly you're getting freight trained. So he gets freight trained by one, two, three, four, five. He gets freight trained by six cars. Be wait, six? No, six. And he, he had to cut off the eight car here just to get back in line. And that basically killed his race all at once because of one time that his corner exit, the third place car was able to get under him. So that's how important the inside line is and that's why I think third gear wins the race. Um, so I was basically just surviving the whole race. I was the most consistent except Chris here Oh, we can look at where even is he at? I must have passed him already. Here we go. So Chris started 10th, and he's just methodically making his way up. He was the fastest out of all of us here. Um, I think in terms of pure speed, uh, maybe he wasn't the fastest, but in terms of like what he can repeat after lap after lap, I was pretty similar to him in consistency, but he just had a little bit more speed with that same consistency. So you can see here, he's gonna he's gonna make his way up through this entire pack. And he'll be, like, catching me from second to first with uh, 10 laps to go or so. But let's talk about line here for a second. So I just think this guy's going to let me pass. But So this line is not very different from the qualifying line, except I just take all pushing out. Like, I just take all risks that I take in the middle of my qualifying run and take it out. A lot more just waiting on the throttle or just waiting and coasting through the corner. Same shallow entry, same straight-ish break. And then the same like easy throttle off, same never getting above 60%. Super easy. And I'm running some of the better laps around here. So Chris is about a tenth up on me, but then everyone else behind me is battling still, so they're a lot slower. But Chris was able to push more and be more consistent in his pushing. So we'll take a look, a look on board with him for a couple laps here. Uh, let's wait for him to get past the lap traffic. So you see, he's definitely getting a little more on the throttle than I am. And that means he's more confident in he's, that he's not going to spin out. And that's really where that whole tent is coming from. My entries are, are pretty good except for there. That was pretty bad. But you see how low he's getting? Well, that was to pass a car. But he's, he's putting a lot more throttle than I am in, and that has higher reward, but it also has higher risk. So if you're in a position where you're trying to catch somebody, that's when you can start putting in that greater throttle, maybe. But see, that, and that's the risk, right? So he was catching up to me. He might have gotten to me. But because he has so much throttle on this front stretch, he overdrives the corner, and suddenly he hits the bump wrong, and he's in a situation. Whereas, you can hear my car. I'm not even getting close to the revs he's getting. And I'm just riding. I think if he got to my bumper, I would have had to push a little more. 
and maybe that would have forced a mistake out of me. But what I was thinking was like, okay, I'm just going to drive in a way where I'm not going to make a mistake. And if he gets to me, then I'm going to have to start risking. And he did a good job. Like, he was getting there. Uh, I got stuck behind this lap, lap car just a little bit. And he allowed him to close in a couple more tents, which was annoying. But I knew that I was still fine. And so even when we're even here, this is when I was like, okay, two laps ago, I got to push a little harder. So you see that I kind of push it off the corner a little harder. So I actually get a little gap there. Just keeping my car a little more sideways than I normally would. And that was allowing me to keep that distance. And so I think if I'm going for pure speed, I might try some more uh, pushing and risking. But for this first hour race with a lead like that, I'm happy to play it safe and let people like Chris catch up to me and then game on from there. Did a really good job. Shout out to Chris. I'll link his channel in the description and put a card right here. I just found it uh, recently. He makes some really good videos, some really good analytical videos. Uh, so go check him out. And uh, other than that, uh, we got the we got the dub. So there we go. First one in a while. You'd love to see it. Haven't, had to do, haven't gotten to do one of these first hour burnouts in a while, so. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Hope to see you all on the track.